Hello YouTube, I uh, just wanted to make this video to show off my watch collection. Um, this is as of September 2021. I uh, just wanted to show off the different pieces in my collection at the moment, uh, discuss what I like about each one and what's next for my watch collection. So the first watch in my collection is my Casio F91W. This is the oldest watch in my collection as well, uh, not by age but by how long I've had it. Uh, so this watch I've had for probably three or four years now. I bought it before I even really got into watches because I love the retro styling and for like 10 or $15, it's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. And it's been through a lot, it's been through the ringer and it just keeps on ticking and I haven't changed the battery even once. And you know, again, bang for the buck in this watch is amazing. It's incredible. I think it's the best value out there. I love the retro styling. I love how light it feels on the wrist. It barely even feels like you're wearing anything. It's super thin, easy to slip under any cuff or like a long sleeve. And uh, yeah, the retro styling is amazing. I, I love it a lot. So the next watch in my collection is my uh, G-Shock. This is the GWM 5610-1. Uh, this is the uh, square G-Shock. It's more of the retro style G-Shocks and I bought it because I think it's a much better fit for my wrist. Uh, I have pretty small wrists than you know any of the other larger G-Shocks. Uh, you know, I, I love this watch. This is kind of my go-to beater watch these days. This is a watch I wear at the gym. This is a watch I wear on those rare occasions when I go out for a run. This is the kind of watch that I'm taking out with me when I know, you know, it's probably going to get dirty or, you know, bashed around or, or whatever else. Uh, you know, this I expect this watch to take a beating and keep on ticking and, and that's what it's done so far. So things I love about this watch, again, I love the retro design. I love the, the old square G-Shock look. I love how well it fits on my wrist. And I love the features, right? Because this watch, being a G-Shock, normally they last a long time, even with the, the ones that have batteries that you need to swap out every few years. But with this watch, you know, it, it has the multi-band six, which I've covered in my full review. And so the watch automatically sets itself. And with Tough Solar, it automatically charges itself. And as you can see by the indicator, even though I keep it in my watch box most of the time, it still, you know, has a very high level of charge. So that's the cool thing about this watch. I don't need to worry about it at all. Like it's zero maintenance. It'll charge itself. It'll keep itself, you know, perfectly up to date, synced with an atomic clock. And yeah, it's just the kind of watch you can put on whenever, wherever. And just, you know, it's a great fit for most scenarios in life. And the next watch in my collection is the newest watch that I've purchased, which is the Seiko Prospects uh, Paddy Diver. And I can't recall the exact model number, but you know, I'll, I'll include it somewhere in, the, in, in this video. But I bought this watch because I really was in the market for a dive watch. I was looking at a few other watches like the Orient Kamasu um, and just a few other Seiko divers, but I really settled on this one because I love the colorway. So I love the, the sort of blue uh, bezel with the, with the red accents. I love the Patty branding. I like the Seiko brand and the loom on this watch was incredible. And I also like the, the bracelet actually, it's really nice. It's, it's only a single link bracelet, but it's, um, it's really comfortable. It's got like a mix of uh, you know, sort of a brushed and polished look. And you know, I, I love it a lot. So this is also kind of a, a more classy beater watch for me personally. Um, you know, I don't have to baby it like my Omega, which I'm gonna talk about next. Uh, but it's also a little more upscale. It's a little more, you know, stylish than the G-Shock, um, especially if I'm trying to look a little more fancy. And, uh, you know, I, this really, you know, sort of satisfied my itch uh, for a diver watch. And yeah, some people might not like the Cyclops. Some people might not be happy with the mineral crystal, but overall for the price I paid for this, which is about 320 bucks on Amazon after I applied some points that I had left over. Uh, I think this is a fantastic watch. And this has definitely been getting a lot of wrist time for me recently. More so than maybe even my Omega or my G-Shock. I've been wearing this a lot, lot more. And finally, the last watch in my collection uh, is my Omega Seamaster Cosmic from 1968. I love this watch again. This is, this is you know, the nicest watch in my collection. This is a watch that I have to baby the most. And uh, because of that, it doesn't get as much wrist time because I'm always you know, having to be a little more careful with it. And it also doesn't keep perfect time, like despite servicing, I guess just because of the age of the watch, uh, it pretty much loses one or two minutes a day, which is not ideal, but I'm not really wearing this to, to be able to accurately tell time. I'm wearing this uh, because I love the look, I love the feel, I love the history of the watch, and I love the Omega brand. So uh, I have been trying to wear this watch a lot more recently, especially in the summer because with the weather being nice and warm outside, even now kind of going into the fall when it's not yet like sweater weather, um, 
I can wear this watch outside and I love, love, love how the watch looks under uh, sunlight. So it's got this amazing silver sunburst dial and these like applied markers are still really shiny. And uh, I just love the look of this watch in the sunlight. And it's not something I can accurately capture on video. It's something you gotta kind of see for yourself. Uh, so kind of stepping back a little bit and looking at my collection as a whole, um, I would say my collection is in total worth probably about a thousand dollars, which is kind of a budget quote unquote watch collection. Uh, the F91W, you know, 10 or 15 bucks. I think I paid $90 for this G-Shock. The Seiko, I paid about 320 and then I paid a bit over $600 for this Omega. So that comes out to you know, roughly $1,000, which I think this is a pretty well-balanced collection. You've got the classic watch, you've got the beater watch, You've got the dive watch, and then you've got the more fancy dress watch from you know a more of a luxury brand. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really happy with my collection so far. I mean, you know, when you kind of get into the watch game and you start buying more and more watches, I think your your <laughs> general price tolerance kind of changes. So you might be willing to shell out a lot more in a watch. Because when I bought my F91W, I you know didn't even want to spend fifty to hundred bucks on a watch. Uh, so that's why I kind of bought the cheapest, uh, decent option, which is the F91W, which, you know, works amazing. But now, you know, I'm not really second guessing spending a couple hundred dollars on a watch anymore, but, <laughs> and I'm even starting to look at watches that are maybe a bit over a thousand dollars, maybe even a few thousand. So, uh, definitely starting to look at spending a lot more money on watches. But for now, I think I'm really satisfied with the, the way my collection is. As far as next purchases, um, I, I think I would like to get a watch that would be kind of more of like a one watch collection, I guess, and kind of stand alongside my G-Shock and my F91W. Uh, there's a chance in the future that I might sell my Seiko and my Omega and kind of put that money towards that new watch, but you know, we'll really have to wait and see. So uh, with the next watch that I'm gonna purchase, I haven't really decided yet. And as far as time frame, it's probably gonna be only sometime next year, maybe even later next year, because I wanna, I have a few, you know, personal, financial, professional goals that I wanna hit before making any kind of expensive commitment on watches. But there's a few that I'm eyeing sort of in the two or $3,000 to like $6,000 range. Uh, a few that I'm looking at are the Black Bay 58 uh, from Tudor in, in black, which is, you know, really classy watch, fits my wrist great. Um, looking at the Omega Seamaster 300 meter diver, uh, you know, with the blue dial and the blue rubber strap. I just really love that look and feel. Um, you know, I'm also looking at Omega Speedmasters and I'm also really, really considering getting a Rolex. Um, in particular, I'm uh, looking at the uh, 36 millimeter Rolex Datejust, the vintage ones from the 70s. I think the reference number is 1601 or 1603. Uh, just one of those Datejusts, but yeah, I mean, really have to wait and see, uh, see how I feel in a few months, see how I feel in like a year from now, uh, before actually, uh, you know, pulling the trigger on any new watches. But for now, I think I'm pretty satisfied with my collection. Uh, so what do you think guys? Uh, I want to get your feedback. What do you think of this collection? What do you think I should add next? What does your watch collection look like, uh, at about a thousand dollars or so? Uh, I appreciate any and all feedback and comments and, uh, yeah, you guys are, you know, what's really making this channel. I'm, I'm super happy with the feedback my watch videos have been getting and you can only expect things to get better and better from here. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like. Uh, I again appreciate any comments and feedback and a subscribe to this channel would be amazing. Alrighty, catch you in the next one.